Hello and welcome to The Entrepreneurial Musician, a newsletter, coaching service, podcast, and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. This is TEM 299, titled, Suffering is Often Voluntary. I cannot believe that we are almost at episode 300. That's really kind of crazy. Thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hitz Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. My plug for the beginning of this episode is a thank you to all of you for your patience. The uh, podcast has been a little bit spotty. Uh, the uh, newsletter has not been happening, although uh, both are going out today as I am recording this on uh, June 1st. Uh, May was a uh, disastrous month for the record books on a number of fronts, and I'm very happy that it is behind me. So anyway, I don't know anybody, uh, no rational person would um, would get mad that a promised newsletter or podcast was not being delivered um, when there's uh, a whole lot of real life getting thrown at the person who is uh, responsible for making and distributing that content. But regardless, I genuinely do appreciate uh, your patience, and hopefully things are back on track now, I say, right as we begin the summer. TEM 299. We used to have a phrase in Boston Brass, what could possibly go wrong as I make that promise as summer is about to start. TEM 299. Suffering is often voluntary. Here's a quote from Seneca, which is what inspired this uh, rant today. We suffer more in imagination than in reality. I don't remember the first place that I heard this. I want to say that it came from, from Seth Godin, but I, I think he got it from somewhere else. Anyway, it's, it's such a powerful uh, anecdote that I am passing it along to you. Um, there was someone who was working in an open office uh, type of a situation, and uh, there was someone a few desks away who was uh, clicking a pen. And they were like periodically clicking this pen throughout the day. And the person who was um, who's the, the center of this tale uh, was uh, getting more and more upset because they were getting more and more distracted at this person whose nervous tick was um, was just was audible and was really uh, kind of driving uh, this person. They probably thought the entire office nuts. Well, uh, fast forward, and um, this person walked by the desk, um, you know, in question uh, when they were going to the bathroom or the water cooler or whatever, and they realized that the person did not have a pen in their hands and that it was actually a radiator that had been making the pen clicking sound, and so it was not a person. And um, in the reason that this uh, tale gets told is because it, it's fascinating that that person was then completely organically was able to block out this pen clicking noise and it stopped being distracting to them. So what does that tell us? That is some manufactured voluntary suffering. Because what the person was upset by, um, well, what they were upset by was that their productivity and their concentration was being uh, destroyed by someone. However, when it was an inanimate object, a radiator is not choosing to do anything, right? Um, when it was just a clicking, um, you know, radiator, there was no, this person should have been, uh, you know, should know, they should, there are norms around here, I would never, etc. And then that's where the suffering came from, was like, clear and reasonable in their mind expectations of a fellow coworker that were not even close to being met. When it was a radiator, they all just went away. And um, so much of how we struggle as entrepreneurial musicians is the same as whether we're going to choose to suffer because it's a pen clicking uh, or we're going to uh, choose to not suffer because it's the radiator. Um, it's all about how we frame our failures in business. If you have no failures, um, uh, then... Uh, first of all, uh, good for you, I guess, uh, but it also is a guarantee that you're not doing meaningful work in terms of as a as a you know a portfolio career and an entrepreneurial musician, because if your business doesn't have a hard part, you don't have a business, and you could just do what others have done before you, but chances are very good that there's not that much impact and or limited 
compared to what it could be. And that almost always means there's not that much income. And even if you hit the lottery and there is, then you're probably bored out of your mind every single day. And it actually feels like a job, even though you are your own boss and get to set your own schedule. So this is all about how we frame our failures in business or failures in auditions or we pitch someone to collaborate on a partnership and get rejected. So what, which one is more likely? That the person who you pitched is not interested in the specific thing that you pitched at this specific time, or that they have a really low opinion of you, or that they have no respect for you whatsoever, and they wouldn't be caught dead attaching their name to yours on a public-facing project. I understand I'm being a little bit dramatic here, um, but that sure is what it can feel like at times when we get rejected. When we frame failure as something that happens to us rather than it simply being the natural and completely unavoidable byproduct of doing important work, we suffer. It's like me getting mad every time there's traffic in D.C. at 5 o'clock on a weekday. Um, In fact, uh, after I record this, I am heading uh, about 10 miles towards D.C. to go uh, have tacos with my good friend uh, Andy Bove, who's a brilliant uh, recording engineer and tuba player in New York City. He and I have known each other uh, for a very long, over 30 years now. Um, When we're done with those tacos, it's going to be about 3.30 in the afternoon. I'm going to be driving west back home, and traffic is going to suck. So there's going to be traffic. So I get to decide how or if I am going to react to the traffic. I can just plan on an additional 15 minutes to get home, or I can be mad that there's a large number of people, as there are every single Thursday, who are all driving in the same direction that I am. There will be traffic, and failure will happen if you're doing important work. Uh, again, unless you're like just doing work that's so trivial that even success won't really move the needle one bit, you're going to fail. So do the hard work, the work that will actually move things forward for you if it works. Embrace the failure for the times when it inevitably doesn't work, and say no to the voluntary suffering. Okay, this week's quote is, this one I know is from Seth Godin, because I just uh, read it in one of his books. Uh, and this this is like, I could spend a lifetime uh, trying to say this much in a sentence, and I'm, it takes me many paragraphs, and I, at my absolute best, I get about 70% of the way there in terms of impact, and, uh, and, and it took you many minutes of your life to listen to me. Quote, The status quo is the status quo because it is good at sticking around. That's good. Trying to change anything fundamentally is hard by definition. Trying to change academia from the inside is hard. I have tried. I even got traction uh, until I hit a brick wall, which was very predictable in hindsight. Uh, Trying to change what music lessons look like, that format of like, Private lessons, one-on-one, one hour, every single week, same teacher, etc. It's really hard because people just want the regular kind. Trying to change what a school band's fundraiser looks like is hard. No, we have done a car wash every single year, and so we're doing a car wash yet again next year, even though there's like eight other car washes we compete with and it doesn't make that much money, convincing the band community, if you're new, that you're going to try something new for a fundraiser. It's hard. Trying to change your embouchure or how you hold your bow is hard. It's all possible, but it is hard because your defaults are what they are because they are good at sticking around. I just thought that was a cool way to frame how difficult it can be to change anything and why it requires dedication and determination. And I, I think that the if I had to choose for me, my weakness is not the determination. I usually have uh, enough of that that I can share some of that with you. For me, it's the dedication, is that if I realize that something is going to be difficult, driving home from tacos today, I'm going to get stuck in traffic, I will have the dedication to see that through. I got to pick my kid up. There's no chance that I'm just going to park my car five of the miles into the 10-mile drive and just be like, yeah, I'm done, right? Um, that's not going to help me very much unless I could find another taco place, although I'm going to the best one in the area. And so it would be inferior tacos and that's, that's not going to work. So I need the dedication because when things get hard, that's when I can sometimes 
just give up or other times I'm like, you know what? I should, you know, I should tweak this other thing. And it's like, I just, I stop doing the hard work because I trick myself into getting busy. That's why I need clarity of mission and uh, clarity comes first, then dedication. And, uh, you know, and then the determination, um, is, is there when I have the clarity, it kind of all flows from there. So, uh, thank you to Seneca. Uh, thank you to Seth Godin and thank you to you for, uh, your attention, the most valuable commodity any of us have to give. I really do appreciate, um, all of you here. Uh, there's a lot of you that download this every single week through various podcast apps. There's a very small number of you who uh, check this out on YouTube. I appreciate you as well. Um, hopefully that number is going to grow over time. And uh, yeah, I hope that you are uh, having a good spring. And uh, as we are about to enter summer, I'm so happy that May is done. Um, Good riddance, May of 2023. I don't want to throw an expletive tag on here, so I'm going to stop talking about the month of May. Uh, That is going to do it for another episode of The Entrepreneurial Musician. (laughs) 